بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام سيدنا سلام سيدنا 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 Datuk Seri Ahmad Syabri, Datuk Seri Idris Yusof dan Dr. Iwan Nobin Yang amat berhormat Si Khalid Nurdin, Cintia Besar, Negeri Johor Wakil-wakil dari Malaysia yang ikut serta dalam lawatan saya warga Malaysia yang uh, tinggal di Amerika Syarikat khususnya di San Francisco dan yang di California our friends from the United States tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang saya hormati sekian pertama-tamanya saya dan isteri saya berasa berbesar lagi kerana pada malam ini dalam rangka lawatan kerja saya ke San Francisco dan Amerika Syarikat saya dapat bertemu mesra dengan sebahagian daripada warga Malaysia yang menetap di Amerika Syarikat khususnya di California ini dan juga sebahagian daripada mereka yang sedang di Amerika Syarikat Peluang ini adalah amat saya hargai kerana saya dapat sikit semuanya menyampaikan berita terkini ataupun keadaan semasa di Malaysia dan juga untuk mengundi sedikit ulasan tentang hari tuju dan masa depan negara Malaysia kita yang tercinta saya ucap terima kasih kepada tuan-tuan dan puan-puan sekalian kerana telah dapat melapangkan masa untuk bersama-sama bagi memeriahkan lagi perjumpaan kita pada malam ini Ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, delighted that uh, I am able to spend some time with the Malaysian community on the occasion of my visit to the United States I believe the Malaysian community here is a rather active community involved in many uh, strategic enterprises I met some of them early on this evening when I opened the Kazana office here in San Francisco I talk to some of them and it gives me a sense of pride to know that they're doing well and they can hold their own here in San Francisco being the capital of global innovation that is an indication of how far we have traveled as a nation from where we started a small agricultural based economy with very few qualified people but 
fast forward today, we are a different nation. We are moving forward with a great sense of confidence. We've set ourselves very bold and ambitious targets. But we believe that those targets, those goals, are attainable and achievable. We must not forget that whilst we strive to achieve our economic goals, there is the very important dimension of nation building. As a young nation requires us to build a unified, resilient nation particularly in the context of being a very multi-racial, cultural, religious society. The bonds between us must be made even stronger as we move forward. So it is with this in mind that we have embarked on this transformation journey towards becoming a fully developed high income nation by the year 2020. I believe we are still on track. I believe we can achieve that target because we are at about 10,000 uh, US per capita, $10,000 today, and we need to reach 15,000 by the year 2020, and if we grow at about 5% average the next seven years, then our calculations indicate that we might even achieve 15,000 by 2018 or at the latest by 2020. But I do realize that income per capita is not everything. We must ensure that the wealth of the nation is shared in a very more equitable manner. We cannot have an egalitarian society. It's impossible to have an egalitarian society, but certainly we can achieve a more equitable society. If the wealth of the nation is shared by a small percentage of the population, then in the long run we will have political and social difficulties, so to speak, for our country. And even in a country like the United States, if you read Joseph Stiglitz's latest book, his uh, conclusion is that 95% of the wealth created in the United States in recent years is enjoyed by 1% of the population. That is coming from Joseph Stiglitz and President Obama echoed it a few days ago when I happened to watch television. I saw, I saw in a crawler Obama echoed what Stiglitz concluded in his book so we must be concerned about not only wealth creation, we must be concerned about a more just and fair and equitable society. And this is what we have to do. We have to show that the growth that we have in Malaysia is a quality growth. It's a growth that is inclusive. It's a growth that touches the lives of each and every Malaysian, wherever they are from Berlis right way to Sarawak and Sabah. And that's no mean task. But by any stretch of imagination, we've done extremely well because there is rapid social mobility in Malaysia. People who come from very modest or even impoverished background they have now reached 
lofty positions in government as well as in the corporate and private sectors. And I'm sure some of you who are here working in America, in the United States, have gone through what I've just mentioned. You have been transformed. And you've been transformed because we invested in education a huge amount since independence. We've always invested in education as the number one share of the national budget. Not like some countries, it's more money for guns and barracks, i.e. defense. But for us, it's education, the number one item in our budget and it continues to be the number one item in our budget and we are now in the midst of implementing our education blueprint which means that we are going to lift the quality of education to a higher level we want to stress on the need to be more proficient in English mathematics, achievement in mathematics and science and technology, these are key subjects uh, that we need to ensure that our people are not left behind on a global basis. But whilst we recognize the importance of education, it is also important to realize that we have created this conducive environment. Place. People work hard, yes. People achieve through their hard slog, their toil to achieve much success. But it's also incumbent or contingent upon what the government has done. What we have created in Malaysia is an environment of stability, peace and harmony. And without that, you cannot succeed, no matter how brilliant you are as an individual. You need that, you need that environment in which we can ensure there is the atmosphere, the environment of peace, stability, and that you can realize your dreams. You dare to dream big as an individual and you can realize your dreams. And so these are very exciting things in the and I know not everything is rosy. But by and large, we're trying to do better and better. We're trying to improve. It's easy to criticize, it's easy to pass comment in a negative way. But when you do so, please ask yourself, what can I contribute in terms of ideas, in terms of solutions? I don't mind criticism, but I don't like people who criticize yet. When you ask them, what do you have in mind? Anything, they look at you blankly. They have no idea what they can contribute. They criticize, but they cannot offer any better solution. What we need from all of us, and this is why we embark on this concept, Spirit of One Malaysia, is a sense of that we are all together we must be one nation. We must have the sense that we belong together as one nation. And we must contribute towards that. Not just by criticizing, but by contributing in a very constructive manner. And this is what I like to see. And you are here in the United States, not because you are less patriotic. I don't I don't believe that Malaysians who go abroad, work abroad, reside abroad, are, are less patriotic. And today's world, the globe, the world is your stage. <clears throat> and you have to move where the opportunities are, where there's you know, better terms and conditions, where the challenge is. And I was talking to one Malaysian earlier this evening and said, it's not just about money, it's the challenge. You know, we, we, we feel challenged when we are here 
in San Francisco. And he happens to work in a very a major IT company. Yes. And whilst you work for that company, you can also help in this in ways of even in ways like you know trying to look for opportunities for that particular company to partner with Malaysia to create new investment in Malaysia perhaps to bring new innovations to Malaysia but that's in a way that you can project Malaysia on a global scale so Malaysians abroad can help us we can leverage your presence in the United States and other places, particularly here in San Francisco, we can project what Malaysia is all about to the Americans here. We're not doing too badly because anecdotally, I happen to be having lunch in a small restaurant today. And when the waiter came with the check or the bill, depending where you are in America or in, in, in London, in London you see bill. In America, you see check. When he presented the check to me, I asked him, where do you think we are from? He looked at four of us and said, you're either from Indonesia or Malaysia. But I think you're from Malaysia. Uh, maybe he said something about Indonesia, which I don't want to repeat. <laughs> But um, we said, you must be from Malaysia. So there was a sense of pride that we recognized Malaysia as a successful country. And for recognizing us, for guessing where we're from. Because I had to give him an extra tip. <laughs> <laughs> he was very happy to receive that, of course. But we are happy to, that Malaysia is known, and known in a positive way. He has, literally a man in the street, an American working in a restaurant, has a good opinion of Malaysia, has a good perception of Malaysia. So therefore, we're doing well. It doesn't help, of course, Malaysians who come abroad or go abroad and start rubbishing us. That's not helpful at all in addition to spinning stories which are not true. So it is also incumbent upon you to, to have the ability to think and to decide what is the truth and what's not true, what's really been spun around for political reasons. I mean, I don't want to turn this to, to become a political platform, but they are individuals who go abroad and tell lies about Malaysia. So you, it's important for you to understand this, to be able to ascertain and be very discerning in your ability to rationalize what is true and what's not. I mean, to claim that we manipulated the last general election by bringing in 40,000 Bangladeshis to vote at the last general election. That's totally untrue. That is, I can use a strong word in that, but I will refrain. But it's totally untrue, and until today, they've not been able to adduce one bit of evidence to indicate that that actually happened. So what do you do? People were influenced, people were angry, they thought we wanted to cheat. But the truth is that we didn't cheat. It was an honest and fair election. And yet we prevailed despite the onslaught. But what do we do with these people? They told lies. What do we do? Unfortunately, that's a process in democracy. You know, I mean, the uh, social media is a wonderful thing, the social media. But as I keep on saying, it's a two-edged sword. You can make it work in a very 
constructive way for the betterment of society to spread knowledge, information, to be connected with people. But at the same time, it's a weapon that can undermine the whole thought process. And it can go viral very fast. So it's important for us. And how do we cope with this? It's for us to, to develop Malaysians who can think. Think in a very critical way, think in a very creative way. And above all, as we move forward as a nation, we need our economy to be knowledge-based. We need our economy to be based on innovation, on new entrepreneurial skills, the culture of innovation, the culture of entrepreneurial skills. These are elements that can really bring our nation to the fore and for us to be much more competitive. And we've done well, measured internationally. The global indexing puts us at 24, 24th in the world in terms of being a globally competitive nation. And that is the World Bank assessment of Malaysia. The Economist puts us as one of the, the best places in the world to do business. These are very important achievements. But we want to do even better with your help, with the help of Malaysians abroad. We hope to do better and better. And of course, some of you would like to have you back in Malaysia, some of you. Some of the talents, we cannot have all our talents going out of the country. That's why we formed Talent Corp. And uh, I met a company today, Frost and Sullivan. They are based in Iskandar with 55 staff doing wonderfully well. And of the 55, three are Malaysians, diaspora, who have come back to work as part of that team working with Frost and Sullivan. So that's an example in which how we can attract Malaysians to come back. I know sometimes we cannot match the salaries or the opportunities, but hopefully in given time, we can create more challenges for Malaysians who want to feel that they can do a lot more by returning home. But for those who choose to be abroad to be working, I hope you will think how you can protect Malaysia on a global stage. And that is being a true Malaysian. Whilst we find partnership with our American friends, with our foreign friends, let us do our bit for Malaysia so that Malaysia will become in the forefront as a strong, unified, and successful nation. I wish you every success in whatever you're doing. You're a student, study hard, and pass your exam in flying colors. I'm sure Malaysian students are very hardworking students. And if you are part of the Malaysian diaspora, think how you can do your bit. Thank you for your support and your presence.